The name of the poet is William Wordsworth. He was born in 1770 in England and his year of death is 1850. When he was 13 years old, his father was died. His mother nurtured him. Then he went to Cambridge University and got a high education. After that he became a poet. He is also called the poet of nature. What is the reason behind calling him the poet of nature? The reason is that he wrote about different natural objects. His poetry is full of natural objects, mountains, hill areas, rains and many more aspects and objects of nature. Once William Wordsworth said, let nature be your teacher. He thinks that nature is a teacher of a man. He wrote different poems. His two famous poems are The Daffodils and The Solitary Reaper. Themes of his poems. He wrote about childhood, human memory, nature, and different other things. The solitary reaper reading an explanation. First stanza. Behold her, single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass, began also pronounce the word pass in American accent. Alone she curts and binds the grain, and sings a melancholy strain. All listen, for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. So now I will explain every line one by one. Stanza number one. Behold her, single in the field, yon highland lass. Behold means see, single means alone. Yon is a ancient English word. It is old English word. It means that one. Solitary means alone. Highland means the Scotland region of mountains. And last means younger. In the first stanza, the poet is addressing to the reader. He is saying that, look at her girl. She is alone. She is alone in the field. So the poet says that look towards the girl who is a Scottish girl and lives in the mountain area and she is a singer in the field. Next stanza. Reaping and singing by herself stop here or gently pass. Reap means cut or collect a crop, especially wheat or rice from the field. Stop here or gently pass. Gently means calm, kind and quiet way. So in these two lines, he is saying that the girl who is alone, she is cutting and collecting the grain or crops from the field. And while reaping the crops, she is singing alone. So, in next line, he addresses the reader again and says that you have two options. Either you have to stop here and listen the songs or song of the girl. The next option is that 
you can quietly pass from there. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Alone me, solitary. Binds me, ties. Melancholy me, sad and strain is a song. A strain means song. Here the poet is telling us about the loneliness as well as the sadness of the solitary reaper. He is saying that she is cutting the grain alone and binding it alone. She is singing a very sad song. Next, oh listen, for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. Oh listen, here O oh is an addressing verb. He is addressing to the reader again for the veil profound. Veil is valley. Profound mean deep. Is overflowing with the sound. Overflow mean flooded or spilled or filled with. So the poet is saying that he is saying to the reader, reader should listen the song of a solitary reaper because it is very sad in tone, it is very emotional as well as it is very touching song. It touches to the heart and it also fills the valley or the whole valley is filled with the deep sound of the solitary reaper's song. Let's move towards the questions for you people. In the first stanza, you have read many lines, so now ready for question answer session. So you will tell who has written the solitary reaper. My next question is, what is the solitary reaper doing in the field? And the third question is, what is she doing while reaping the crop? And the last question is, what type of song is the Highland girl singing? Now let me tell you the answer of the asked questions. The answer of first question is, William Wordsworth has written the solitary reaper. The answer of second question is, the Highland girl is reaping the crop in field. The answer of third question is, the solitary reaper is singing a song while reaping the crops. And the answer of last question is, she is singing a sad song. Now, move towards second step. No nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among Arabian sands. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, waking the silence of the seas among the farthest families. So, no nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to a weary band. Chant mean to sing or shout the same words or phrases repeatedly. Notes mean songs and weary mean tired. Bears mean group of people. In these lines, the poet is comparing the sound of a nightingale with the solitary reaper. She is very beautiful in sound and on the other hand, nightingale also repeats the beautiful sound again and again. The sound welcomes to the weary or tired group of people who pass from the nightingale. Of travelers in some shady haunt among Arabian sands. Band of travelers mean people who travel in the group called caravans. Haunt mean a place that somebody visits often. And some shady haunt among Arabian sands. So it refers to some oasis or a place that is a green area in the desert. 
and that is present in the Arabian desert, of travelers in some shady haunt among Arabian sands. So, the poet is comparing the song or the sound of the solitary reaper with the beautiful sound of Nightingale, who repeats her sound again and again, and it mesmerizes or attracts the reader towards it. So, on the other hand, the solitary reaper is a very good in sound or her sound attracts the poet. But according to the poet, the sound of the solitary reaper is more beautiful than the sound of a nightingale. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird. Now, he talks about another bird who is cuckoo. Cuckoo bird is also famous for its beautiful sound. A voice was so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird. In these lines, the poet is saying that the voice of the solitary reaper is so thrilling, it is so exciting. It is so amazing and surprising that there is no comparison of the sound of the solitary reaper with the sound of cuckoo bird. Cuckoo birds always mesmerize or attract with their beautiful sound in springtime. So, in springtime, cuckoo birds convey a very beautiful sound and attract the people. On the other hand, Nightingale is a bird that attracts the passengers or passers-by who pass from the Arabian sands or the oceans. But the solitary reaper has more beautiful sound than that of the cuckoo bird and the nightingale. Break island sound of the seas. It creates the thrill in the environment and among the farthest Hebrides. Farther mean away. Hebrides is a island. As you know, it is an area of or island near Great Britain. So here the next stanza is end. Now I will ask you questions again. The first question is why does the poet compare the sweet song of girl with those of nightingale and cuckoo? Next question, what is meant by shady haunts? Next question, why do you think the nightingale song is described as welcome? And fourth, why do you think the cuckoo's bird is described? Cuckoo's song is described as thrilling. Let me tell you the answer. The poet wants to say the voice of the solitary reaper is more melodious and pleasing than that of a cuckoo or a Nightingale, it is the answer to the first question. Shady horns refer to Osses. An Osses, an area, is the desert where there is a water and where plants grow. The Nightingale song is welcome as it tells refer travelers of shade and rest ahead. The Cuckoo song is thrilling because it tells the winter season has ended and the spring season is setting in. Now, let's move towards next answer. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow. For old unhappy for of things and battles long ago. Or it's some more humble lay, familiar matter of today. Some national sorrow, loss or pain that has been and may be again. Will no one tell me she sings, what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old and happy far of things and battles long ago. So, perhaps mean maybe plaintive mean sad and far of things mean things or affairs of past. In these four lines, the poet is asking a question and he is very confused about the meanings of a song of the solitary reaper. So he is saying that or is asking, is anybody there um, among the readers who can tell me the meaning of the song? 
perhaps the plenty of numbers flow for old unhappy far off things and battles long ago so now he is guessing about the meaning or the subject of the song the song is in unfamiliar language that is why although the song is very beautiful it is it is enchanting and mesmerizing for the ears of the poet but he doesn't know the meaning or the theme of the song so he is asking to the reader or the people he is saying tell me the meaning of the song now she he is guessing maybe the song is a plaintive number maybe the so, uh, the sound or the song is a sad song number mean song for all unhappy for of things then he guesses again first he guesses it is a song sad song next he guesses maybe it is about the petal it is about the old unhappy far of things it is about the memories it is about the past memories or maybe it is about the petals that were fought long years or many years ago or is it some more humble lay familiar matter of today some national sorrow loss of pain that has been and maybe again again he guesses again and again about different things humble lay of lesser importance thing or is it some more humble lay familiar matter of today now he is asking a question and guessing about the subject of uh the song in his own way next he thinks maybe it this song is about the familiar or known matters of everyday life maybe it is a song of less important thing lay means song familiar means known or common some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and maybe again so then he guesses that maybe this song is about the pain or loss or it is about the emotional pain so the poet is never assured about the theme and the subject of the poem that is why he is guessing the song again and again he is guessing the meaning and subject of the song again and again now more questions for you people first explain more humble lay familiar of today this line the next song is uh, the next question is will no one tell me where she sings who is the speaker in this line and why does he ask such a question so answer k is for you people it means the uh, this is the answer of first question it means that the theme of the solitary reaper song may be less important than great historical events and wars it may be about some common affair of daily life and the next question the answer is the speaker is the poet himself he asks such a question because he is unfamiliar to the language of the solitary reaper this is a last tense whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart had bore long after it was heard no more so in fourth stanza uh, now we will look towards the difficult words uh, the word sickle sickle mean a curved shaped tool that is used to cutting grass motionless mean still mounted up means went up i bore bore me carry carried whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending the poet is saying that although he does not know the meaning and theme behind the song of the maiden or girl or a young girl as if her song would have no ending he realizes that 
this song has no end or maybe it is a very prolonged song that will be no end because it is a lifelong song that sound will be resonated in the mind of the poet forever i saw her singing at her work and over the sickle band the poet say that i saw her singing at her work i am saying that he, she is singing a song while doing her work and over the sickle band and she is in a bending mood she is bent on the sickle while doing her job she is singing i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill next the poet says that i listened i listened the song very carefully motionless i was stand i was stood still like a statue and i as i mounted up the hill while i was going towards the hill i was singing i was hearing the song of the highland lass the music in my heart and bore long after it was heard no more these two lines in the last two lines he says that the music in my heart had bore the musicality or the sound of the girl or the sound of the solitary river song bear in my mind it i am carrying the song i'm actually the poet was totally indulged in the magic of the sound or the musicality of the song so he was uh, approving that or uh, in the conclusion he was saying that he bore the song in the heart and carried it as a treasure so the song the wording of the song was like a treasure that was came into in her heart that was coming into her heart actually the poet was uh, totally engrossed or totally uh, you can say that uh, uh, totally indulged in the beauty and the wording of the song that he approved that or that he accepted that the musicality of the song or the wording of the song remained in his heart for many years as a treasure he bore the song in his heart like a treasure it was a poet who admits that uh, in a conclusion that although he didn't listen the song again in his life but it was a heavenly song it was a spiritual song it was like a spiritual sound that remained in his heart for many many years and it was it became a part of his heart or his memories so next uh, you have a question students uh, how does the song affect the poet next question is what does the poet do as he climbs up the hill so ready for answers the answer to the first question is the song of the solitary reaper impresses the poet greatly he feels it permanent effect on him the answer of next question is he is unable to listen the song but he feels he is listening it next you will solve some MCQs by your own from first stanza. There is a question for you. The poet urges the passers-by or insists the passers-by or the travelers to stop, listen, or pass by gently without creating disturbance. All options are correct. Next stanza. and the question is with whom does the poet compare the reaper's girl's song 
nightingale and cuckoo, dove and eagle, sparrow and vulture, parrot and owl. Next question. In which language is the girl singing? Unfamiliar, Urdu, Turkish or French? And next answer. What does the poet do in the end of the poem? And what does the poet want to tell with reader? It is your task to solve the question or write down the answers of the question. Next, you have a work to do by your own that is summary writing. I will tell you the steps for writing the summary. First, you will write title of the poem and the poet's name. Next, write central idea of the poem. Next, write main points of the all stanzas in chron chronicle order or in sequence. Write complete sentence for each point. Check spelling and sentence structure. Check the coherence of the summary. Write the summary again. I am going to read the central idea. Solitary Reaper is a beautiful poem by William Wordsworth, who is called the poet of nature. In this poem, po the poet describes the power and the magic of Highland Girl's song. He compares it with the song of a nightingale and that of a cuckoo. He is unable to guess the theme of the song, but he feels its powerful effect on his heart. So, now I will tell you the main points from each stanza one by one. The poet in first stanza, the poet passes by Highland Lass. The maiden is singing a song while reaping the crop. Effect of songs on the poet and the surroundings. Next stanza, main points are Nightingale's song and its effect on weary bands in a desert. A cuckoo song and its effect on the people sailing near Hebrides. The maiden's song is more welcome than the nightingale's song and more Trailing than the cuckoo song. In this stanza, the poet is unable to understand what the maiden is singing. The poet thinks about the theme of the song and tells about different possible themes. The poet leaves the valley. He is unable to listen the song, but he feels the effect of the song on his heart. So you have a homework, follow the above instructions and write a summary. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you. Have a good day ahead.